I am Julie Ryder, the discoverer of the Montana Megalis. Since 2012, I have been discovering a number of dolmens, ancient pyramids, and megalithic sites throughout the Montana Megalis in the Montana and the United States of America. One of the most extraordinary discoveries is the, is the silver skull. It's a huge, elongated head skull. It's very defined. There are two rows of teeth and perhaps a tongue sticking out in the middle. There's an incisor tooth, which is very large and in the exact anatomical position of a human's incisor tooth. There are sutures in the skull, a coronal suture coming down the side of the temple. There's a sagittal suture coming across the top of the skull right down the center, splitting it into two lobes. Elongated skulls are found in ancient sites throughout the world. These are from Paracas, Peru. These large skulls have unusual sutures. However, the, the silver skull here in Montana is much, much larger than any skulls that have been known throughout the world so far. It's solid stone, meaning it was flash fossilized. And giants are known to have six fingers and six toes. Further north in the Montana Megalis, there is an area called Dancing Giant's Feet, where there are a number of six-toed, ancient, huge feet. We have found five-toed feet and six-toed feet throughout the Montana Megalis. This is Julie Ryder. I met the Silver Skull Complex, touching the back of a skull that I call the dyadic presence. On the back of the neck, you see the vertebrae, cervical vertebrae, the spinous process as it comes down to ground level. This was once a living being. From the side, you see the eyes of the epicampal folds, which look almost oriental, gazing at the horizon, almost a childlike face. It's a beautiful place to do shamanic journeys. There's a cave over here. We're doing a number of ceremonies here. It is the changing of the world time. And the time has come for us to do ceremonies at each of these different 100 megalithic sites and each of the 46 dolmens in preparation for the changing of the world time, the changing of cycles. Bill and I are here at the Silver Skull Complex on a beautiful May morning. We came last night, but it was too windy to film, so we're back early this morning. We're testing out the acoustic sounds. This is like a sound chamber. Many of the ancient megaliths we're finding were built with acoustic levitation. Harmonic sounds are part of the technology. So we're playing around with it. This is a pink granite. On the front of this rock is gray granite filled with particles of quartz crystal. Much of the boulder bathless is 42% quartz crystal. That's why it resonates. The crystal holds the memory. The rocks hold the memory and the knowledge. We're going to play some music and look at the acoustic levitation properties of these rocks. We often lay upon the earth in these sacred places in order to do a shamanic journey. We access alternate realities of space and time. We meet with interdimensional beings, spirit helpers and guides, 
in order to bring back knowledge and high frequency energy to heal ourselves and Mother Earth. Bill carries us in and out of these sacred portals and supports us with a shamanic drum beat. Myself and three of my friends were invited to Lakota Sundance and we went a day early just to help the elders get everything ready. When we arrived, the elders asked us to go gather sage and so we found mountains and mountains of sage. We gathered the whole back of an SUV full of sage. When we got back to the Sun Grants grounds, they looked at us and said, wrong kind, take it back. And so we had to get rid of all that sage because it wasn't what they needed. What they really wanted was this. It's a single stem of sage. And this is what's used in the ceremonies of the Lakota. It grows in profusion here at the Silver Skull. And it goes at sacred sites all around the Montana Regalus. It's a single stalk, wonderful smell, and this is the sage that's used in the ceremonies, both at the Lakota and at the Cree and at the Nez Perce. This is the sage. We were exploring the megalith above the silver skull and stumbled upon this stone that appears to be inscribed. Patina has obviously been scraped off to form a linear script of some kind. So much more to research and discover. Is this a runestone left by the Vikings? Is this an example of the Sumerian Aryan evolution of an ancient alphabet? Or perhaps Vinca from ancient Romania? There is a capital E that also appears in the large ceramic stones in the vast underground tunnels near the Bosnian pyramids. In cuneiform, the capital E means the place of the temple, the archives. I also recognize a capital H, like the huge stones in Puma Punca in Bolivia. Or is this just an example of more modern graffiti? There are several megalithic sites nearby. As we circumnavigate the Silver Skull Complex, giants peg on is seven miles as the crow flies. Downhill's destiny is about a mile above us. Come join us at the Tree of Life as we explore and discover more of the Montana megaliths.